Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Philippians. Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 4. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The title of the message is, Are You a Responsible Christian? Are You a Responsible Christian? Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Are You a Responsible Christian? The Bible says, If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of Others. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Father, thank you for, for saving us lost from hell and giving us another opportunity to meet on this Sunday morning, Lord, and for the privilege to be here, Father, to hear your word. As Pastor Jay, uh, whatever you prepare for us today, please fill with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give us your word, Lord. Please speak to us. Amen. Uh, you know what we need, Lord, and whatever we need, please help us. Uh, let us get it for this sermon, Lord. Please bless each and every one of us for us with the Holy Spirit as well. Open our ears and really help us to uh, realize how important this is in our lives, Lord. And help us to keep our conversation holy at all times and help us not to have our minds wander off during the preaching, Lord. Help us to focus as well. In Jesus Christ, I'm Amen. 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 It is very hard to find a responsible person this day and age. The whole world their job is to blame everyone else for their own mistakes. If your children doesn't come out to be a good young man and young woman, people start blaming the system. Some truth to it, but many times it's because you, know, you didn't do your job as a parent and the kid didn't do their job as a kid. If you don't do well on your test, you start blaming everyone else. You're like, oh, you know, the test too hard, they made everything so difficult, but you didn't give your all, you didn't do your best. And you're not responsible when it comes to running the house. You know, if you're the head of the household, you don't do it. You're not responsible for things happening around you. People have become so selfish and they only are about themselves, I, 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 that responsibility to them is only thing about just themselves and just being selfish in all of their ways. As Christians, you have to continuously look at your Christian life and check, you know, have I become really a selfish Christian? Do I know the responsibilities that I have as a Christian? Because if you're only thinking about things about you and yourself and the person that you see in the mirror is the only person that you care about, then you're not a responsible person. Especially as a Christian, after you've gotten saved, you have to do something. And there's a duty, and you have to do something about your salvation that God has given you. Going back to Philippians chapter 2, let's look at verse 12. The Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and traveling, trembling. You don't work to get salvation. We know that right away, right? Works will never get you salvation, especially in this church age, age of grace, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached. But if you don't rightly divide the word of God, you'll be confused and you'll start applying Old Testament doctrine as well as tribulation doctrines. But right now, if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved once and for all. And what this is talking about is that you work because you fear the Lord. You know, trembling yes. is not about reverence. Trembling, you know, when you tremble as a kid and you know punishment is coming your way, your leg is shaking. You tremble when you're standing in front of a judge and judge has the right 
to send you to prison for a long, long time, or even give you a death penalty. You tremble when you are fearful. So the Bible says we fear and trembling, you know, but how? You work out your own salvation because you're saved. Yes. That's it. You work hard for the Lord because you're saved, not because you want to get saved. Yeah. Right? You want to show to the world because you're saved, you want to live for the Lord. Amen. Because you're saved, you want to be a responsible Christian. Yep. Because you're saved, you have those responsibilities that comes along your way. That's why, you know, if you go continue, verse 13, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And verse 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings. And verse 15, responsible Christian, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom he shineth lights in the world. So you already have what you need to be a responsible Christian. That is, you have that one thing already. You have salvation. Once you have salvation, you can do anything for the Lord, as long as your heart is given to the Lord. So how do you become a responsible Christian? How do you know you're a responsible Christian? Number one, knowing that you're saved. If you don't know you're saved, you can't do anything because there's no conviction. There's no strength and power in your words. If I don't know where I'm going after I die, it's going to be pretty hard for me to really tell you, hey, trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, so that you could go to heaven. And they question you, and they reply back to you. Do you know you're going to heaven? I'm working on it. No. You know, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. God chooses who goes to heaven or hell. You know, Calvinism, right? I want to believe that I'm predestinated. You know, to go to heaven. So those answers will not help the person make their decision. Yeah. What are you telling me, right? You don't even know where you're going, and you're telling me to go somewhere. It's like telling a kid, okay, okay, go to Disneyland, because you want to go to Disneyland. And how do I get there? I don't know. <laughs> Next time, the person, the kid will not have any type of trust in you because you don't know. And as a Christian, if you want to be responsible, you have to know that you're saved. There are some Christians out there that they don't know they're saved. I mean, they trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior. They put all their trust in Him and Him alone to go to heaven. Yes. Then you're saved. Amen. What more do you have to do? There's no strings attached. You can't be a responsible Christian if you don't know where you're going. Because there are many, many Christians, and I was one of them, who goes by their daily lives not knowing where they're going. They have accepted Christ from the bottom of their heart, knowing that they're a sinner on their way to hell. They accepted Christ according to the word of God. No works involved by faith only, trusting his grace and mercy. But they don't know where they're going because they don't have assurance of salvation. Then you can't be a responsible Christian because once you don't have that assurance of salvation, what happens is that your whole Christian life gets messed up. You know what? You know, you start doing things because for the wrong reasons. I have to keep my salvation. Does Arminianism comes in. You know, oh, you know what, you know, I have to keep my salvation. If I don't live like the word of God, now I, I have a chance to lose my salvation. And people will start thinking that way. And you can't be a responsible Christian. You start wondering. You start having doubts. You know, when someone has doubts, they can't really live like a fulfilling life. It's like you have doubts toward someone who's teaching you certain things in a classroom. Maybe it's a history class, but you doubt everything that he says or she says. 
I don't trust anything you say, you know? Then there's no conviction. You're not gonna learn anything. Can you imagine if you're hearing someone and you don't trust that person and everything that they tell you, many times you won't remember anything because you don't trust that person. You wanna be a responsible Christian? First, know that you're safe. Know where you're going after you die. All right. And then afterwards, start, things start to line up, right? Let's go to verse two. Let's go to verse two. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being one upon a cord of one mind. So how are you going to be a responsible Christian? You have to have same love. A lot of times people have different type of love, right? Yes. People have carnal love. You need to have Christ-like love. Why? Well, look at go to verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Literally, you have to have an attitude toward service and obedience, just like Lord Jesus Christ. You have to have a love like Jesus Christ. What was the ultimate love that Lord Jesus Christ showed us? He gave himself. Thank you. Every being, every drop of blood for yes. us. If you want to be a responsible Christian, you have to show that kind of love to your brethren, and also to the lost world out there. If you know that you're saved, if you know where you're going after you die, isn't it natural for you to show that love to lost world out there, as well as people who's saved? Because a lot of brethren needs love, right? Yes. And we're talking about not Hollywood love, right? You know, it's not our job. It's not your job to start walking up to people and telling a brother, hey, you look handsome today, you know, just to make him feel better. You don't go up to a sister and say, man, you're really pretty today, right? And you don't mean it, right? Oh, I just want her to feel better, right? Don't say it at all, right? You do it, you show your same love, you know, like Christ did. I mean, do you even pray for each other, right? You know, supplication comes in here. I mean, do you truly love for your brethren? Do you actually pray for each other? And it's a question that you've been asked many, many times. It's a question that you've been asked almost all the time. Do you pray for each other? I mean, how are you going to have love for each other if you don't even pray for each other? And we're not talking about praying for each other on Wednesday night, looking at the prayer list <laughs> once a week. We're talking about on a daily basis, right? And we don't want you to be a once-a-week Christian. Sunday, you come, listen to the Word, and, you know, listen to Bible study, study, have fellowship. Wednesday, you save it for prayer, right? Since it's a prayer meeting. And rest of the days, you don't do anything. Can you imagine if you've, you married with someone, man and a woman, right? You marry, and they're like, you know what? I'm only going to spend Wednesday with you on doing this. That's it. On Sundays, I'm only going to do this. So the rest of the days, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Me. Yeah. I don't care what you do either, right? Let's just, just meet only on Wednesday. Let's only meet on Sunday. That relationship is not going to last. Yes. How does love grow? If there's interaction on a daily basis, you say, I want to love Lord Jesus Christ more, right? I want to have the same love that he showed us and he currently has for us and he will have for us in the future. Then you have to display it. You have to practice it. You have to do it on a daily basis. It's something that's really, really hard for many, many Christians because things of the world get in the way, right? Your work, your family life, you know, whatever that's going out there, then you tend to forget that, you know what? You know, I have to have same love. And a lot of times you don't even show that kind of love, you know, to your family, right? You know, I say it many, many times as a Christian, if you want to be a responsible Christian, you should never have more love for the outside world than inside, right? 
Yes. If people start laboring you that, hey, you are so nice, you show such a compassion and love for outside people, your coworkers, your friends, your cousins, everybody, but inside home, you're like the worst person. You're a bad father, you're a bad husband, you're a bad wife, you're no good wife, I mean, and then your children is like they look like the angels outside, right? But at home, they're the biggest devils. They don't listen to their parents at all. You know, outside of home, you come to church, you know, just to show to other people, very hypocritical, you know, you're a good child, right? Like your parents are shocked. You do things when they tell you to do first time, right? But at home, you're such a different person. You don't want to hear your mom. You don't want to hear your dad. You know, your room's always closed and locked, right? And you, you're a totally different person. You have to understand, you know, everything starts from home. If you don't have same love, you don't have that love at home, outside things that you show eventually will be exposed. And eventually it will burn up. Eventually people are going to know. That's why you have to understand, you know, if, you're, if you have a family, you have to understand that I need to show this same love to my family first. Don't show it to me any less than your family or anybody else. I mean, do you love your husband? Do you love your wife? Do you love your children? And I'm not talking about, yeah, I give them money. I provide their needs. We're not talking about that kind of stuff. You have to do it. I mean, that's a given, right? Yes. But do you show your responsible Christian side at home, right? As a spiritual leader of the house, right? As a spiritual followers of the house. And you're doing everything according to the word of God. Showing what Christ did. You know, showing his attitude to your family. A lot of people get in trouble, especially families and within the church, because their attitude is not like Christ's attitude, right? If you have Christ's attitude, you're going to have same love, right? Yes. But if you don't have his attitude, you're not going to have same love, right? Lord, I mean, it's obvious he's God and he's perfect. Amen. But he was also 100% human being. And he showed that. He had to go through every single temptation that you and I go through. And he still showed compassion. He still showed his love. He still showed kindness, mercy, grace to his disciples, to, the, to his people, to everybody. Is that you, though, as a Christian? Do you show the same type of compassion to your family? You know, the worst thing that I could see is that when you are interacting outside, you're so compassionate to strangers. <laughs> and then you're so compassionate to other church members. Man, but at home, you're the most uncompassionate. You're the rudest person. You're violent, both words and, you know, action. Man, that is not a good Christian. I'd rather you be rude, everything same, so that you could actually change. You know what happens to those type of Christians? They think they're okay. You think you're okay. Because outside world thinks me this way. I don't care what my home is. It's always shaded. It's always covered. When I lock the door, people can't see. But one thing you forget is that Lord sees everything. Yes. And Lord will reveal everything one day. Then you have to start thinking, have I been the best husband, most loving husband that I needed to be? Have I been the most loving, best wife that I needed to be? Have I been the best loving children that I needed to be, according to the Word of God? If you haven't, then you haven't been a responsible Christian. You have been a careless, selfish Christian who does not care about your own family. Think about it. If married people are one, right? You're half and half. 
And if you start caring, stop caring about the other half, what happens? Imagine if I only use my right side of the body. I don't use my left side. What's going to happen to my left side? It's going to die. It's going to become you know, inoperable. It's going to become stale. It's going to start stink, right? I only wash right side of my body. Can you imagine? Man, it, like literally two face, right? My, if you see me from that side, I'm really clean. If you see me from this side, I'm a homeless, you know, or worse, right? Full of smell. But many Christians are just like that, yes. right? You're fake. You show different type of love to different type of people. And unfortunately, worst love is shown at home and best love is shown outside for outward appearance. I'd rather you and me be bad to outside and bad to home than be a hypocrite, right? Yes. Because if I realize I've been bad outside, I've been bad at home, I have a chance. I just have to be good everywhere, right? But if you're going to start and still continue to act like a hypocrite, then you have no hope. You'll never have this type of same love. You'll never have one accord. You'll never have one mind. Again, church ministry, everything is very important. But people tend to forget your home ministry is the most important. It starts from your home. Like, we do our best, you know, as pastors, pastors' wives and teachers, you know, at church to bring people and align people and teach people the right way. But at home, suddenly your parents are completely against everything that we put in place in the church, kids will lose everything that they've learned, and they'll never have that one mind to learn. Oh, you know, my Sunday school teacher taught me this and has been teaching me this, but my dad said it's wrong. Okay. My mom said, you know, don't ever pay attention. You know, just stay there, kill time, and let's eat and enjoy then what's going to happen? That's not the same mind. No. That's why some kids grow in the Word of God, in the right ministry. But some kids get worse. Can you believe it? It's like some Christian comes to church for 20 years. They're same as 20 years ago or worse. But some Christian who's been coming to church for only a few years, but they've grown exponentially. Why? Because... The person who's growing, continuously growing, have one mind. One mind in the ministry. Same love for the Lord and for the people, for everything. But the other person always have ulterior motive, right? You never want to be that person who show your love or charity expecting something back. That's not a responsible Christian. You do it because the Lord showed the same love to you. No strings attached. Lord died for us. He did everything. All we have to do is trust Him. We don't have to go do sacrifice like in the back in the old days. I don't have to catch, you know, some animals there, you know, go to a priest and have a sacrifice. No. No strings attached. Your love should never have any strings strings attached, whether it's outside, whether it's home. That's why when you're witnessing outside, it's okay, however they respond, right? If you have a compassionate, loving heart like Lord Jesus Christ, whatever response it is, you're still going to love that soul. I mean, you might not like it if they cuss at you. You might not like it if you know, they frown at you. You might not like it if they throw the tracks on the ground. But do you really love that soul? If you do, you show your compassion, right? You have to set things right. If they are saying the wrong things, you have to put them in the right place according to the Word of God. But same love will have compassion even to people who spit on your face. Lord has, I mean, compassion for people who spit on his face, punched him, you know, I mean, tortured him. I mean, you and I, we have to look at this love at a different angle. We've only looked at it as someone, oh, yeah, I like that person because they've been nice to me. Isn't that the normal way of human thinking? Sure. You're only 
You love people who only loves you. Yes. Right? You hate people who hate you. Yes. I mean, that's a, that's a worldly standard. Now, you hate people who love you, hate people who hate you. You know, I mean, people hate everybody. But as Christians, as a responsible Christian, I mean, you have to look beyond the physical appearance. Amen. You have to look at the souls. Yes. And especially inside the body of Christ, and especially at your own home, and stop looking at all the faults of your wife and your husband. Amen. You know, people, who, you know it. I mean, did you ever pray for your husband's, you know, faults, wives, instead of always nagging? I mean, husbands, have you ever prayed for your wives, you know, any deficiencies that you see according to your standard? Or you just point it out all the time, right? I mean, Christian homes are breaking left and right. Christian homes have the same type of divorce rate nowadays like the worldly people. Why? Because they don't have any love for each other. All they have is Hollywood love. Oh, you bought me this. I'm so happy. Oh, you made me this. I'm so happy. You made my tummy happy, so I love you, right? You made my feelings good. I love you. No, it doesn't go like that. I love you because you're my other half. Yes. Simple as that. I love you because we, you know, we're joined in marriage. And children, same thing. Amen. Children should never have a different love for one parent or the other, right? And also, you shouldn't base your love on material things. These days, it's so full of materialism. Only love that kids know is if they get a brand name shirt. Brand name shoes, brand name purse, bag, you know, backpack, right? Once they turn 16, brand name car, right? Well, you know, I can't drive that. That's 15 years old, even though it's running perfectly well. You don't deserve a, you don't need a good car to go to high school. No, 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 no. I need like, you know, I, I told you my brands, right? It starts with B, it starts with, you know, M, you know, it starts with, you know, like L, you know, like <laughs> I only want those. And it can't be a low class either. It has to be full option, you know. Uh, can you imagine, you know, brethren, you know, the days when we had to roll down our windows oh, yes. when we didn't have, you know, automatic yet? No AC. And no AC, right? Amen. Now everybody's just complaining, right? Where's more automatic coming? I don't know about you. I, mean, I don't want to, I want to park my car. I don't want a machine to park for me, yes. right? I want to drive. I don't want a machine to drive for me. I mean, we do have uh, cases where machines kill people, right? Yes. And going back to it, then as children, do you love your parents because of materialistic reasons? Or do you love them because of who they are? And you should love them especially more if they're Bible-believing parents or non-Bible-believing parents. Because if it's Bible-believing, they're trying to lead you the right way, guide you the right way, train you up the right way to help you become a better young man and better young woman. Yes. And if they're not saved, then you have to pray for them more than ever, right? That's how you show your love. Yes. Are you a responsible Christian when it comes to love? And thirdly, if you want to be a responsible Christian, you have to submit. You have to submit. Again, let's go to verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. If you're going to be a responsible Christian, you have to submit. Amen. You, you, the best way to submit is to kill your flesh on a daily basis. That's how you're going to submit to the Lord. And think about it. Lord shows submission in his service and in his obedience. I mean, that's least we can do. We need to submit to the Lord in our service. Everything that we do, we do to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you should be. I mean, the reason you're listening, the reason you're writing, the reason 
you know, I'm preaching. The reason we're sitting here, the reason, you know, online people are listening is because at the end of the day, you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. You want to submit to him at any moment. What is the common characteristic and most important characteristic of a person that submits? They serve. You submit because you serve. You serve because you submit. I mean, what do servants do? They submit to their master. Who's our master? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're his servant. You know, even though he's our best friend, he's our Lord and Savior, but he is also our master. Amen. Yes. Then you listen to your master. Yes. I mean, think about it. We have a little dog, you know, Papillon. You know, we're his master, you know, me and my wife, right? And he needs to submit to us. Like, if you want to eat this snack, you have to show your submission. We make him sometimes, you know, roll on his back. You know, we say bang, bang, and he rolls his back. He's showing his submission, right? Because he wants to obey our command. I mean, I mean, animals do it very well. That's why, you know, when we compare ourselves to animals, we should be ashamed. I mean, we know too much. Yeah. Our brain is too wicked, right? And we're trying to always sly and, you know, be a weasel out of everything. Yes. But just like animals, just like, you know, your loyal dogs, right? You have to be submitting to the Lord. When you submit to the Lord, there's loyalty. Amen. It's so hard to find this day and age loyal person because everybody's just selfish. Everybody just wants their own thing, right? It's hard to find someone who is loyal to people anymore. I mean, if you have a one loyal friend, I mean, that's a blessing this day and age. If you have a two, three, multiple, then you're a really blessed person because if someone has to choose between you who you've known each other for many, many years, or money, many people will choose money, right? Same thing as Christians. If you have a choice, and if you could be loyal to Lord Jesus Christ by submitting to him, or compromise and submit to the world, and a lot of times love of money, I don't know what the, I mean, I'll just say 10 out of 12 people, just like the spies, will choose the money. They'll choose money instead of being loyal to Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? None of the church members will know. So I'm just going to do this you know, outside of church. But they always forget. Lord's in you. You're a temple of Holy Ghost. Yes. But once you start engaging in sinful ways and sinful life, you become blinded. It's like you look back and you know what you know now. A lot of people will say, I would have never done it, right? But why would you do it during those times? Because you let your sin control you. Once that happens, you don't become Christ-like mind anymore. You become very carnal-minded. You become devil-minded, right? Yes. You become worldly-minded. That's what's going to happen. So in order to avoid that, in order to avoid sin, in order to really, really live a responsible Christian life, you have to submit to the Lord in all things. Every areas of your life, you have to submit to the Lord. You're like, I don't know how to submit to the Lord. Just obey the Word of God. Amen. Just go to the Word of God. Right? Then how do you become a responsible Christian? Next point. You have to stand for the truth. And what's that truth? The Word of God. You have to stand for the Word of God no matter what. You have to have a final authority. And that's the Word of God. Amen. This is your standard, right? You stand for your standard, and that's King James Bible. Yes. You will not be swayed. You will not be moved. You will not compromise. Because you will stand for King James Bible yes. and what it says in the Word of God. If you stand for the Word of God, if you stand for truth, then you become a responsible Christian. I mean, who wouldn't, right? My principle, you know, we have a lot of people, they stand on their principle, right? 
I, my principle is, you know, constitution. My principle is my, you know, family morale. You know, my principle is whatnot. But our principle, we have it easy. We have the word of God. Amen. And you have to stand for the word of God. And this has to be our standard no matter what happens in your life. Okay? Hey, Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. You have to abstain from it. Yes. It doesn't matter. That's your standard. That's why you could answer people when they try to engage you in certain sins. Like, no, I can't do it. Because my standard is not the world. It's not you, right? Yeah. It's not even me. My standard is the word of God. Amen. If I hurt your feeling, I'm sorry. They'll respect you for it. They might hate you, but they'll respect you. I'd rather have someone hate me and respect me than someone who now sees me as a hypocrite. They're like, oh, I thought you were a King James only, you know, dispensational, independent, Bible believing Christian. But you're willing to go to a bar with me, huh? Okay. Gotcha. Don't tell me about Jesus Christ anymore because I can't trust you. I kind of wanted to because you were really staunch and steadfast in the word of God that you believe in. So I wanted to listen, but not anymore. See, that's what happens to a lot of Christians. You know, you could lead someone to the Lord, but at the last moment, you don't stand. It's like you have to stand for the truth, but you're still sitting down. Right? Sometimes people say, it's so hard for me to speak up. I'm introverted and everything. But you don't need to speak up on your own. Holy Spirit will speak through you. Amen. Once you open your mouth, Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. Amen. And that's how it works many times. You just have to get over that hump. Right? Oh, I can't talk to that person. He's seven feet tall, full of tattoos, you know. He's got the crying tears everywhere. Man, I know what that means, Lord. <laughs> like, who do you think is more powerful? Him or me? And where am I? I'm inside of you. Just go. Amen. And then you start talking the Bible, and they're the biggest, you know, kindest babies out there. Yes. And they listen to the whole thing, and some of them get saved. And a lot of times, you do it on your own. Like this little kid, you know, ah, I got this. You know, he's a little kid, and you know, I'm going to win this to him. You're full of pride. And then you try to, and then they start cussing at you. <laughs> like, I don't need blankety, blankety this, you know. I don't believe in this heaven or hell. I mean, we ha well, why, why, why am I saying this? Because we experience this week in and week out when we do street ministry. That's why you have to stand no matter what. You know, even if we, we're all human beings, brethren. Your family makes mistakes. Your husband, your wife, your children make mistakes. When they do, you cannot compromise just because you feel bad. For my little Johnny and my little, you know, Jane, you know. Oh, you know, I can't hurt their feeling, you know. They, they cry so much, you know, because of that boy, you know, I told them to break up, you know. Now she do not even talk to me. It doesn't matter. That's right. You date to get married. So you become carnal. You could have done a lot of wicked stuff. So I helped you. Amen. You know, you should be thankful to me. Yes. But they will be, you know, later on. So as parents, as children, as Christians, we have to stand you know, for the word of God. This has to be what? Our final authority. Yes. If you are going to make any decision in your life, you base it off the word of God. Go. That's it. Amen. Not your human emotions, not your feeling. There are some gray areas out there. That's when you ask for counsel, you know. You know, that's why, you know, pastors are there and, you know, your other brethren are there who went through it. But certain things are clear, white and black. Then you just follow as is. You know, there's no way, no reason for you to interpret it any different way, right? Thou shalt not steal, then don't steal. Right? Oh, no, you know, I, Lord, I have to do this this way, this way, this way, this way. And it doesn't constitute, you know, stealing, you know. But it's stealing. If you're taking something away unlawfully, that's stealing. Then don't do it. There's no justification for it. So if you want to be a responsible Christian, you have to stand firm. You have to stand for final authority. You have to stand for King James Bible. Amen. That's it. Right? 
you know, when the Bible issues do come up, how's your lip? You know, I know some brethren, they can't wait, you know, because they want other person to know the perfect word of God, right? Good for you, but don't let your zeal get the best of you either. Don't let it do out of pride, you know, or don't do it out of, you know, knowledge puffing you up, but you want them to know the truth. But some brethren, you know, they become so quiet, they can open their mouth, right? I mean, if your mom's last word was to, hey, I'm dying for you, just tell them about my restaurant, right? That's my legacy. I guarantee you guys going to meet, when you meet anybody, you're going to talk about your mom's restaurant. Have you went to this, heard of this restaurant, right? That was my mom, you know. She was the founder, you know. It tastes good, right? You know? And then you're going to talk about it all the time. Because you love your mom, and she died for you. And then that's a legacy, and she told you. Bible says preach the word in season, out of season. Amen. You've got to preach. And you've got to preach the perfect word of God. Why would you just stay still? Are you not proud of the King James Bible? Are you not proud of your own salvation? If you're not, are you not proud of what you have? Yes. When you're proud of every other thing, Aren't you proud of having the truth, right? Amen. Again, it's not about being proud and being haughty, right? We're talking about being grateful, yes. being appreciative. Like you want to tell everybody about the, what you have. You know, the best way, I'll close it with this, you know. Best way to be a responsible Christian is having joy in telling truth. That's it. Amen. Having joy standing up for truth, right? I feel good when I've stood up for the Word of God. Yes. I do. I feel bad when I miss an opportunity to Amen. stand for the Word of God. Yes. I feel good. I mean, as a human being, when I preach the Word with right love for the lost souls out there, I feel bad when I don't preach the Word when I should. Right? I feel good when I come to a Bible-believing church to grow with same love, same mind. But I feel bad when I come with the wrong reasons, when I come with a cranky attitude, bad attitude, complaining attitude, murmuring attitude, any attitude that's not going to glorify God and edify the saints, I feel bad. Yeah. You should. If, you, if your goal is to come to church, have your own way, right, and then go home your own way, man, I feel terrible for you. And other people will be terrible because of you. You have to come with the right attitude. At the end of the day, we're saved and we're to serve. We have to work out our own salvation. Why? Because we're saved. Amen. And how to do that? By showing a sincere, sincere love for the Lord in every area of our life. Yes. Is your life revolving around Lord Jesus Christ? Or is He revolving around you? Like, Lord... I have time for you when I have time for you. Instead, you should be like, Lord, no matter what, I have time for you. Amen. You know, you love people, right? When they're always open and they're always there for you, right? You know what? Whenever you have issues, problems, just call me. You appreciate those people. But if someone, you know what? If you have a problem, only on, you know, Saturdays between 11 and 12 p.m., that's the only way you could call me, okay? I mean, if you're going through some terrible stuff on Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, no, don't, don't bother me, okay? I'm busy. You know, that's the type of Christian life we're living with Lord. Yes. Right? Lord, you know, I only got time for you Wednesday, Sunday. For the rest of the days, I'm kind of busy. You, know? but you should be like, Lord, you know, I need you like, every single day, every single hour, every single moment. Then your relationship with the Lord as a responsible Christian will grow. Would you want to stay as a baby in Christ, like a little immature Christian all your life? No. If Lord tarries even 5, 10, 20 years from now? Or do you want to grow, become a strong you know, soldier for Jesus Christ? Amen. I want every one of us to be found as a faithful, strong soldier for Jesus Christ when the Lord comes back. Let's pray. Dear Father, many times we just forget our responsibility as a Christian. 
We don't work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We just neglect it, Lord. We just do what's pleasing to us. We follow after pleasures of life and cares of this world. Instead of doing things that would glorify you, instead of submitting to you with same love, Lord. Help us not to be selfish in our ways. Help us to be thankful in all of our ways. And help us to truly serve and submit to you from the bottom of our heart, Lord. I pray that you bless the rest of the services. And above all, we want to see you. We look for you to come back right now, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.